is uh, no joke. Pride ends with a crash. Now, but is there a healthy sense of pride? Sure there is. You can be proud of your family and you realize that they are a gift from God. Amen? James 1.17, every good and perfect gift is from above. You can be proud of your work ethics and your abilities and your gifts, but you realize that they all come from God. That is a healthy pride. But when it becomes unhealthy is when we begin to get huffy, puffy, cocky, boastful, to the point that we even know better than God. And you make a statement like that, you think, wow, how can that be? But we've all been there and done that. Amen? Amen. You understand when we sin, when we take that moment and step into sin and blatantly sin, we are shouting with our lives that we know better than God. But listen, this temptation of pride has been around since the beginning. You remember Adam and Eve? You remember the forbidden fruit? Yeah, it started way back when. And we're going to study that today. And we're going to pray that we can leave here being proud, but being proud healthy. Leaving here and humbling ourselves and shouting, we need thee every hour. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Father God, thank you very much for this day. And Father God, I really want to thank you for the uh, worship service this morning. And I want to thank you that when we sang about the presence of Jesus changing our lives. So Father God, I want us to take a moment in this prayer time before we start our study and answer that question. Drop all our pride and be honest. Is the presence of God really changing my life? People see that I am different because I have dropped my pride and said, God, have your way with me. And it shows. That was a great question through worship this morning. And Father God, I pray that all of us will love you and walk in you and shout to this world in desperate need that you are God and you are the answer. And all God's people said, Amen. We're going to be looking at Genesis chapter 3 this morning. Genesis chapter 3 for a little bit. Now the serpent, and you know who the serpent was. He was the devil, all right? And he disguised himself as a serpent. Now the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord God had made. I want you to understand something now. I want you to, to, to focus in on this. This is true stuff. This really happened. This is real. This is the Word of God. This is not make-believe. You know, when I was a little boy, I loved to read the book about Peter Pan. I loved the movie about Peter Pan. I loved flying around and hanging out with Tinkerbell and fighting Captain Hook. Ah, matey. I loved all that stuff. But you know what? It was maple. It wasn't real. But this, take it to heart. It's real, amen? It's real. This really took place. The serpent really did take place, was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord God had made. <coughs> he said to the woman, did God really see that you must not eat from any tree in the garden? So there he goes, starting his business, starting the temptation. But listen, you know what? The devil, he may not be out there like a serpent, but the Bible says today in 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 8 and 9, he roams around like a roaring lion. Rawr, if you would. Looking for someone to devour. 1 Peter 5, 8 and 9 says this. I want to read it. Be self-controlled and alert. He's talking to us Christians. Be self-controlled and alert. Your devil, the devil roams around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Now you know what? As people. As people, we all have a different physical walk. Alright? I've been with some of you. I've gone out to eat with some of you. I've played basketball with some of you. I've gone to the hospital with some of you. And I tell you what, some of you walk like you're going 150 mile an hour. Amen. I mean, the time we get there and the time we get home, I've got to soak my feet in the hot tub over in the parsonage. No, really. That's the way some of you walk. Now me, I'm from the country. I've got more of that nice, relaxed walk. 
How y'all doing today? Isn't the weather nice? Just enjoying it, you know? Y'all are just like, boom, Speedy Gonzales, underlay, underlay, reba, reba. Yeah, but that, that's okay. We all can have a different physical walk. But when it comes to Christianity and having a walk with Christ, we got to be self-controlled. Amen? And self-control is being under the control of Jesus Christ. Is Jesus Christ's presence changing our life? And to be alert. To be alert. Hebrews 12, 2. Fix your eyes on Jesus. Fix your eyes on Jesus. So here it is. If you don't want to get devoured by the enemy, a roaring lion, let's be real honest. Have you ever seen families devoured by the enemy? Have you ever seen individuals devoured by the enemy? God forbid, but we've all seen it. Have you seen churches devoured by the enemy? Why? Because we weren't self-controlled and we didn't stay alert. If God be for you, who can be against you? Amen? Then hang with Him. Because there's an enemy out there. There is. And it started way back in Genesis chapter 3. Now the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, Did God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden? Isn't that something? What's the first thing the devil does? He's done it to me. He's done it to you. Psst, doubt. Doubt. Did God really say that that was wrong? Sammy, Sammy, did God really mean you couldn't do that? It's like this. Did God really say, in 1 Corinthians 6, 9, and 10, did God really say, do you not know the wicked will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived, neither the sexual moral, or idolaters, or adulterers, nor male prostitutes, nor homosexual offenders, nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor the drunkards, nor the slanders, or the swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. Did God really say that? You bet He did. You bet He did. It's in His Word. God's truth. He can't tell a lie. He said it. See, but the devil tries to get us to think, did God really say that? Puts that doubt in our mind. But you know what's neat? Eve knew. Hey, let's give props to Evie. Who, 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 who? She knew. She knew what was right. She knew what was wrong. Look what she says here to the devil. The woman said to the servant, We may eat from the trees in the garden, but God did say, but God did say you must not eat from the tree that is in the middle of the garden, that you must not touch it, or you will die. That's right. She told him. She knew what was right. But you know what? The mistake was she didn't stop the conversation. Right then and there should have been the end of the conversation in the garden. Over. Evie said to the devil, God said it. That's what he said. I knew he said it. This conversation is over, serpent. Talk to the hand. It's over. James 4, 7. Submit to God. Resist the devil. And he will flee from you. But you know what? She kept on conversing with the devil. And let's be honest. How many in here have ever had conversations with the devil? And we started out, no devil, no devil, no devil, no. And at the end it was, yes devil, yes devil, yes devil, yes. Talk to the hand. Because I'm talking to the Holy One. And that's why I listen to him. That's where I get my directions. The poor old Evie, she got caught up. She got talking. And then the devil says back to her, you will not surely die, the serpent said to the woman. For God knows when you eat of it, your eyes will be open and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. And everything changed. She heard that and all of a sudden, woo! Oh, wow. I can be like God. I can call the shots. Me, Evie, can be in total control. That's dangerous. That's a dangerous place to be. Proverbs 16, 18. Pride, <clears throat> excuse me, pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. 
Proverbs 26, 12. What a strong scripture. Do you see a man wise in his own eyes? There is more hope for a fool than him. And we all know Proverbs 14, 12. There's a way that seems right to a man, but in the end it leads to death. You get all cocky and you get all boastful and you think that you know more than God, you are in trouble. Truth. Amen. You know, I love sports. So usually when I'm preaching, there's always a sports analogy that comes up. And what I thought was, do you remember the heavyweight champion of the world, Mike Tyson? A great boxer, but Lord, does he need Jesus. But anyway, I remember before he fought Buster Douglas in Tokyo, Japan, and he was interviewed, and he said things like this, you know what, I'm not even going to train for this fight. Of course, he had a squeaky voice. You know what, I'm not even going to train for this fight. My God. I'm not even going to worry about him. Buster Douglas, he's nothing. I could whip him up there behind my back. I'm champion for the world. You know what happened to Mike Tyson in Tokyo against Buster Douglas? One of the biggest upsets in boxing history. Buster Douglas knocked him out. Knocked him out. I don't need to train. I don't need to be ready. I can beat Buster Douglas with that behind my back. I don't need the Lord. I'm smart. I'm good looking. I'm self made. I don't need the Lord. I can. Huh? I'm going to tell you what. Right now, you crash. The devil will knock you out. Amen? Amen. So, Eve is just all excited now. He's deceived her. That's what the devil does. He deceives. He deceives. He's a liar and a deceiver. When the woman saw, see, everything changed. When the woman saw the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye and also desirable for gaining wisdom, never should have been there, Eve. Never should have been there, honey. She took some and ate it. And after she ate it, she also gave some to her husband who was with her, and he ate it too. Adam, son, what are you thinking, boy? You know, there is nothing in the Word about him questioning anything. There's nothing in the Word about him and Eve having a discussion. He just pulls up, yes, dear, and eats the fruit. <laughs> now, don't get me wrong, men. You're to love your wives and you're to love the, your, your families and you need to be open to their <coughs> input as well. But listen, whoever it is, whatever relationship it is, we cannot put their direction, their direction, their guidance ahead of God's. Amen? Amen. Adam should have said, hold up, Evie, baby, I love you. I mean, I love you and I'm so glad that God gave you to me. But hold up, Evie, you're messing up, sweetie. Not me. I don't want no part of it. Baby, you are messing up. God said not to do it. Not Adam. Yes, dear. Now it's all going to get crazy. Now it's going to get crazy. That's what sin does. It just makes things crazy. Crazy hard. Crazy hurtful. She also gave some to her husband who was with her and he ate it. Then the eyes of both of them were opened and they realized they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves together and made coverings for themselves. William Barclay, in his commentary, says, Sin had cost them their innocence. We know that, don't we? Sin cost them their innocence. Then the man and his wife, that's Adam and Eve, heard the sound of the Lord of God. You know, you can remember, probably when they heard the sound of the Lord their God, they were excited. They couldn't wait to hear his voice. They couldn't wait to see him. They couldn't wait to fellowship with him. But look what the devil has done. Look what sin has caused. The man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day, but they hid. They hid from God. They hid from the Lord God among the trees. But the Lord called to the man, Where are you? He answered, I heard you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. The devil tricks us and we sin and we just feel so bad and he heaps on the shame and he heaps on the guilt and we hide from the Word of God. We just can't read it anymore for what we've done. We just can't pray anymore for what we've done. We just can't come to church for what we've done. We hear the sound of the Lord and we're hiding in the garden. And I tell you what, the devil absolutely loves that. But you remember, you, you remember this. 1 John 1 9. We preach it a lot around here. If we confess our sins, He's a faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen? Hey, can we give the Lord a hand for that? Uh, if you really appreciate the forgiveness of God and second chances, oh, 
okay, well, Adam and Eve, back to the story, they're playing hide and seek from God. He answered, I heard you in the garden, and I was, I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. And he said, who, who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree I commanded you not to eat from? Do you catch this? He doesn't say from the tree that I suggested you shouldn't eat from, or I strongly suggested you should eat from, but I commanded. You know, most of you know, and if you haven't been here before, now you're going to know it. By the grace of God, I'm a recovering drug addict, nine years and ten weeks clean. And I was in a rehab facility for 30 days in Brighton, Michigan. And before they let you go, you meet with a counselor, and you have what's called a debriefing session. And they give you some suggestions, and they make it very clear that they're just suggestions. They're strong suggestions, but they tell you, you're a grown man, it's up to you, but this is what we suggest. One, when you get out, you hit 90 meetings in 90 days. Number two, when you get out, try to stay out of a romantic relationship for at least a year and stay focused on your recovery. Number three, continue to work the steps. And number four, cling to your greater power, which mine was Jesus Christ. He says, but these are just strong suggestions, Sam. But I do want to tell you this, Mr. Stowe, that 82% of the people that don't follow this, they either end up back in rehab, incarcerated, or dead. But they are still just strong suggestions. I'm going to tell you something. God don't give suggestions. Amen? God gives commandments. And listen, we've all been on the blessing side. Amen? We've all been on the obedience side. And we've all fall short. And we've all been on the discipline side too. Man, as we say, here's sin. Give me Jesus. Give me Jesus. That I commanded you not to eat from the tree. And look at, look at, look at Adam. I'm telling you, man, the Bible is so, so real. <laughs> look at my, look at my stand up man, Adam. <laughs> Then the, uh, the, the man said, I said, God, now listen. The man's God, the woman you put here with me, she gave me some fruit and I ate it. It's that woman. It's that no good, doggone, honorary woman. She about throwed me down, put me in a sleeper hole, stuffed it in my mouth, God. <laughs> it was her fault. You know, I thought when Shelby, I miss those kids. I know I talk about them a lot, but I just miss them. I remember one Saturday morning we was off the house and their nanny lived with us and she made homemade chocolate chip cookies. And we were sitting there watching cartoons, but I got a phone call and I had to get to the hospital. Somebody was sick and wanted to see me, so I got dressed. I didn't worry about Shelby, but I looked at Butter. I said, Butter, do not eat all those cookies. I'm serious. You saved me some cookies. When I get back from, yes, Daddy, yes, Daddy. I go to the hospital. I'm there about two hours. Get back to the house, go in. Straight to the kitchen. Got chocolate chip cookies on my mind. Go to the plate. There ain't one cookie left. There ain't one cookie left. So I went to the bottom of the steps and I hollered up there. I said, Butter, get on down here, girl. She comes clocking down them steps and she has got chocolate all over her face. <laughs> and I said, Butter, we need to have a talk. Now, Daddy, wait a minute. Before you say anything, I've got to tell you something. Shelby made me eat every one of them. <laughs> the blame game. The blame game. You know what? Adam, you did it, buddy. Man up. You did it. Our sinful choices. We'll be playing. We did it. Own it. Admit it. Give it to God. And it's gone. But oh Adam, he was he was on a roll. <laughs> but you gotta honor Eve. You know what? She messed up. But she ended well. Look what she said. And you know what? I better. I better lips were quivering. I better voice was cracking. I bet there was tears running down her eyes. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this you have done? The woman said, The serpent deceived me. And I ate it. No excuses. I got tricked. The old devil tricked me. I got deceived. You ever been tricked? You ever been deceived? Stay close to God. Stay close to God. 
Psalm 1914 says, May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Love loving God. Love it that God loves you back. I was in the hospital a lot this week visiting people. And Jacob and Carissa, who go here, real sweet young couple. I love Jacob's hair. It really looks good. I mean, yeah, he's a styling young man. He's bold. And Carissa and their, their little girl, Lily, had some problems and had to have some surgery. So I went up there and hung out with them a while. And I tell you what, it was awesome to see the way. The way they loved that little girl. And the way they loved loving that little girl. And the way that little girl loved them. And the way that little girl loved loving them. Listen, love God like that. Love loving God. Love it that God loves you. And he loves loving us. Amen. Amen. Let him be God. James 4.10. Humble yourself before the Lord and he will lift you up. I'm telling you, if you think the world's going to lift you up, you're right, it will. There's certain times it'll lift you up. But it's going to lift you up in the wrong way and headed toward the wrong direction. And you are going to crash. Been there. Done that. Don't want that anymore by the grace of God. Well, I should do something. We did it uh, Wednesday night, and I felt like the Lord was leading me to do it again this morning to share with the rest of you. I want you to take a minute. Can everybody see this glass see-through container back there? Can you see it? There should be a picture come up there on the screen as well. You see this? I want you to take a second, and I want you to imagine that this is your heart. This is your heart. And you all can see through it. Very plain. And you be honest this morning. What fills your heart? What fills your heart? Is it really the things of God? Is it really mercy, grace, and humility? Is it really God? You are large and you are in charge. And I love it. Or, the truth be known, you're full of bitterness. You're full of strife. You're not listening to God. You're still doing things your way. If that is the condition of your heart, you need a heart change. Because I promise you, I promise you, based on the authority of the Word of God, you will crash. May the words of my mouth of my heart be pleasing to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Will you stand with me? Father God, been truly good to be in your house. Father God, continue to give us a desire to be truthful about the condition of our heart. You know, and it's a hard thing, especially when you're family church like us and everybody knows everybody, to come forward sometimes when the Lord says, when you say to us, Lord, you know, standing there at this time is not going to be enough. I I need you to come. I need you to come up humbly back and talk to me. And maybe that's what he's saying to you this morning. And if he is, I pray you have the courage to come. But if you're here this morning and you don't know the Lord, I pray that you know it. Because I'm going to tell you something. Not because I'm the preacher, but because it's true. It's hard out there. But Lord, you promise you'll take care of us. So my prayer is just this today, Lord. Have your way. And again, put the worship team. May the Lord, may your presence be changing our life. We're different. God, if there is somebody here that's doing life without your presence and needs to be baptized and come into the family of God, draw them near. Draw near to God, James 4, 8, and he will draw near to you. I love you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Yeah. <laughs>
Uh, Tina comes this morning, and uh, she needs prayer. So come on up here, John. Father God, we, uh, we come humbly before you, saying that you are Lord, and you are God, and you are real, and you are right, and you are powerful, and you are loving. And Lord, our sister Tina, she's, uh, she's having a hard time. She's having a hard time. Life's hard. And she just humbly admitted, I can't do this anymore. I need his help. So God, we ask you to, to help her, to lift her up whatever needs to be done. And Father God, use us. That's why we're here. We're the church. We're the body of Christ. We're the family of God. May we be your hands and feet in this situation. God, thank you for giving her the courage to come. That's not easy. Bless her, God. Bless her. In Jesus' name.